We are live. Yes, so welcome to the Book of Boba Fett review miniseries. I am probably going to be talking fairly fast in this because my back... I'm running out of ways to say that my back hurts. Yeah, I'm too stubborn to not make a video. So I'm just going to try to go fast through it. So this video will have some spoilers for... Star Wars stuff leading up to the show, but it will not have any spoilers for this show itself. I have done separate videos where I spoil individual episodes, and the link to the playlist will be in the description box. So, yeah, the, the plot... Boba Fett, having killed Bib Fortuna, becomes the new... Daimyo of I'm trying to think if it's of the of the planet of Tatooine or if it's just one of the mosses. Anyway, yeah, he's going to be running things, and the yeah, there are some problems that arise from his trying to run things. So. This was written by John Favreau, Noah Clore, and Dave Filoni. And yeah, pretty sure I don't have to say who John Favreau and Dave Filoni are. But yeah, they. The show is not as well written as The Mandalorian. The, uh, the pilot is okay. It's. It's better than I thought it would be, based on how much a lot of people seem to hate this show. But it's really not... Like... You know, for some people... I, I was always going to... From when I decided I was going to watch the show, I always knew I was going to watch the entire thing. Even if, like... I started completely hating the show. Which I wouldn't really say I ever did. But... For some people, the pilot episode, that's where they decide if the show is, if they're going to keep watching the show. And, I mean, it could be worse, but it just, it makes some mistakes. And the, the finale, it takes a certain focus that a lot of people did not really think was the right focus to take and I certainly understand where they're coming from. I personally thought it was fine. <sighs> yeah, I that's probably about as much as I could say without starting to spoil. So like Mandalorian seasons 1 and 2 and probably 3 this has a lot of fan service, but where on Mando it tends to be very satisfying, it feels organic, here it feels very obligatory, and some events and characters are just completely wasted. You could do so much more interesting with them, but here they're just there. And there's, you know, for some of them they might show up again later, but some of them, you know... There's some chance that Disney is going to take the wrong message. They're going to be like, oh, I guess people don't want these characters or events or locations. Okay, if you insist, you know. And, yeah, so, direction. The various episodes of this were directed by Rob Rodriguez, Dave Filoni, Steph Green, Bryce Dallas Howard, and Kevin Tankeruan is what I'm going to guess is how you pronounce that. Rob Rodriguez does some of his best and worst work here. And I you know, I've watched almost everything he's made and just yeah, like sometimes he is sometimes he does a really great job here, but other times yeah. I did think Bryce Dallas Howard and Steph Green did fairly well. I am not 100% sure what Oh, right, and Dave, Dave Filoni's episode was also pretty good. I'm not 100% certain what episode Kevin Tankerowin directed. I think it was one that I thought was fine. 
And yeah, so Timuera Morrison returns to play Boba Fett. And yeah, so Morrison said the series was an opportunity to explore the character's past and show what happened to him between the events of Return of the Jedi and the second season of The Mandalorian. And let's see. yeah, he focused on Fett's simmering kind of violence and his loneliness that was caused by watching his father die at a young age. And I think he gives a good performance. I think it's mostly that, like, the writing for the character a bunch of the time is just not that good. And I don't think I can really give that much more detail without starting to spoil. And let's see. Yeah. Something that does work a lot of the time is that the, you know, the character's actions and the show in general is very inspired by gangster movies and westerns. And let's see. Yeah. So as various critics have pointed out, there is not enough time. Yeah. Too much of this show is devoted to flashbacks. There's not enough present-day Boba stuff. And the flashbacks have some major weaknesses that I don't think I can really go into without spoiling, but yeah. I, I didn't hate everything flashback, but after a while I did get really fed up. I I, I started out being like, I don't know, I guess this this could be... this is okay. But after a while I did start to really tire of the flashbacks. And let's see, yeah, the characterization is not what a lot of people wanted from Boba Fett. And yeah, Ming-Na Wen as Fennec Shand, an elite mercenary and assassin in Fett's service. And she continues to do really great, you know, and apparently, like, I, I watched some behind-the-scenes stuff on Disney+, Plus and she's like geeking out over star wars stuff like there's a yeah it's not a spoiler to say at one point she comes into contact with a bantha and in behind the scenes stuff she's like going nuts over but look at how cool this bantha looks they they did such a great job on the on the effects here as so considering that she gives an incredible performance because she's like tamping down all this excitement at being in Star Wars and she's playing this like detached very analytical kind of like she's not she's not prone to just like outbursts of emotion you know even like there are scenes in the show where she's extremely surprised but instead of like panicking or getting emotional she like takes strategic action in response to this you know she, she uh, in at least one scene she's legitimately not sure exactly what threat she's facing but she's still like taking smart action that you know she's she's being careful and being and like getting ready for you know sudden danger including if the sudden danger might be Oh, I'm going to be spotted by something and it's going to attack me because it notices that I'm ready for it. You know, she's playing it cool whilst like and you you can see it in her eyes. Like she is like trying desperately to figure out what exactly is going on. What what is my situation here? How do I get out of this? But her body is like she she remains still enough that you might not even like if you don't if you're not paying close attention to her, you might not even know that she's getting ready to attack, you know. And... Yeah, I... Let's see... I guess, yeah, a lot of these... A lot of the actors who appear on this and their characters would be spoilers. So I'm just going to say that I think the acting tends to be good. Some of the characterization is awkward. And often, personally, I found if there was something about a character that I didn't like, it tended to be down to writing and maybe also direction 
more than like acting talent. And right, it's not a spoiler to say there are some very cool cameos. And so yeah, the the yeah, cinematography was handled by David Klein, Dean Cundy, and Paul Hewen. And I don't think I was really familiar with David or Paul before this, but Dean Cundy, I've been following his career for quite some time. He he shot one of my all-time favorite movies, the 1978 Halloween movie, and yes, still working in 2022. So that's very impressive. Movies are shot significantly differently now than they were back then. But yeah, the the, the cinematography tends to be quite good. And so does the editing, and it was handled by Andrew S. Eisen, Dylan Fershine, Jeff Seibenick, and Dana E. Glauberman. And all of them have at least some previous, like, experience editing something that you, you can understand why they were chosen for this. Uh, quick, yeah. Andrew edited Mandalorian episodes, Dylan edited, uh, or helped edit The Lone Ranger and Superman Returns, so yeah, that helps qualify him for this. And Jeff also edited six episodes, or helped edit six episodes of The Mandalorian. And Dana edited, or at least helped edit, two episodes of The Mandalorian, which, you know, a, a bunch of people worked on both shows, and that does make a lot of sense. In a number of ways, this has a resemblance to that, but I do think it is noteworthy. There are also some interesting, distinct differences. And, yeah, so the, the action... There's a pretty decent variety. You know, you have chases on foot and in vehicles, physical fights, shooting, including shooting while in vehicles, use of superpowers and items, equipment vehicles. The action of this show is inc extremely hit and miss. Some episodes do have good action. That usually comes down to who's directing. I, I continue to be surprised that sometimes, somehow, Rob Rodriguez is does a bad job at directing action. I, I I do not understand it because I've seen him direct some of the best action scenes committed to film, but sometimes somehow he just does a, a bad job. If if you see you're going to be watching an episode of the show directed by Rob Rodriguez, that does not necessarily mean that the action is going to be well directed, sadly. I thought Steph Green did good Bryce Dallas Howard definitely does a good job. But yeah, a lot of the action is very meh. And I wouldn't really say that the show has... Like, it has maybe two or three action scenes where I would, like, recommend the show for its action, you know. So the score was handled by Ludwig Goranson and Joseph Shirley. And Ludwig also scores The Mandalorian, which again helps the, the, yeah, you know, there is a, they are related, so, and yeah, he continues to produce really atmospheric, moody music that's a lot of the time very different from what we're used to from Star Wars, especially Star Wars episode movies, and yeah, I, I'm really, really glad that they went so outside of the box with that, because it really paid off. Now, let's see, the, the sound design is at times good. You know, that is fairly important for Star Wars, and yeah, for sure, at times. Now, the tone goes back and forth between, like, sometimes it's very cheesy, sometimes it's serious and gritty, and sometimes the fact that it goes back and forth between these really 
leads to some cognitive dissonance. And there are seven episodes in the one season that this show has gotten, and it's not looking like it's going to get more than the one season. And, like, some of the episodes are, like, around 40 minutes. And considering that length, I just... It's really hard to recommend considering that the 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 show itself i think a strong argument could be made that it should be only two-thirds as long as it is an argument could be made that it should be cut by cut in half and it kind of seems like they just like they wanted to make sure people would keep tuning in because you know like like the mcu shows and like the mandalorian the Disney Plus shows, they, you know, they don't dump all the episodes at once, like some streaming services, but they have one, you know, they release one per week or so. And it really seemed like they were just kind of scared that people would lose interest in Star Wars, you know, with no Mandalorian season. To, to put on there, and so they tried to give some kind of, yeah. Okay, so that brings us to the, the best element of the show, which I would say is when the characterization really, like, at times it absolutely nails it. And the the worst aspect is probably it just feels like it doesn't really need to exist. And I hate saying that about something Star Wars because Star Wars usually there's always something there where you can point to and say, okay, that's, you know, like even some of the lesser of the games, I'd be like, no, 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 look, I, I get it. Some of it's pretty bad but there's some really amazing stuff you know like there are things i can point to in mysteries of the sith that that i would say you know still it's still there's still really something there and you know the the super star wars games has some really great stuff the the jedi academy is a very uneven experience and some levels are definitely missed more than hit, but there's still overall some really good stuff there, and it's just, yeah. And, let's see, so, yeah, the thing I was most worried about was the, it's difficult, like, part of the appeal of, Jan of a Boba Fett is how little we know about him. And I, I realized before this show, there's other stuff that help flesh it out. But if you only watch the original trilogy, you know almost nothing about him, and that makes him intensely fascinating. I was worried that they were going to give us too much, and that we would just kind of end up being getting used to just seeing Boba Fett, and it doesn't really mean anything. Like, if you watch... Episodes 5 and 6, like, every single time that he, like, steps into frame or does a... Gen it, they, they don't give him that many lines, but what he has is great. You know, other than his dying words, obviously. But the... Which are now no longer his dying words, but the... the yeah, watching the show, you know, a couple of episodes in, you are just kind of used to seeing... Boba Fett, you know, as the daimyo, there are scenes where he's just sitting in, on Jabba's throne, and, like, and, and that, again, like, with Jabba, usually when you saw him or someone came around and said, I'm here for Jabba, it meant something, but here, like, there are scenes where Boba is just sitting on the throne, and Jabba's old torture droid is just, like, talking about something like 
what's yeah, what's the word? Like some some kind of you know, some something they just have to deal with, but that isn't very interesting. And I think those scenes I think it's supposed to be funny. I think it's supposed to be that it's kind of humorous and amusing that we're seeing these like you know, Boba Fett and Fennec Shand and the torture droid and they're talking about the stuff that you know, we wouldn't really expect them to, to get, you know, like, of course, at some point, someone has to deal with these kinds of things, but it just doesn't really land, in in my opinion, you know, maybe for some people it really worked, and I, I don't think this was really a show that could survive, like, that, that kind of subversion, you know, when, when you hear that, like, Boba Fett's name is in the title. You know, you expect this badass bounty hunter thing. And then, like, a lot of it is just, like, he's not always sitting, but he spends a lot of time talking to people and just, like, doing diplomacy. And it just isn't really what we... Uh, yeah. Okay, so what was I most looking forward to? Temuera Morrison, and he himself did not disappoint. Now, the, the the season itself is overall also just meh. Like, honestly, if someone just insists that you have to watch at least some of this show, make sure to, like, for, for them or someone else, to tell you these are the parts that are actually entertaining to watch and just have them like fill you in on what happens in between those scenes that's that would be my recommendation i'm not unhappy that i watched it and it was my own choice nobody forced me to watch it or to make this video it just like i could see myself sitting down and rewatching mandalorian Seasons 1 and 2, and honestly, probably also 3 when it comes out. I'm not sure I see myself particularly sitting down and re-watching this show. And... Let's see... Right, so... The... I'm going to briefly go over what I think you maybe need to watch before this, you know, obviously the original trilogy, since that is where we met Boba Fett. I would definitely say watching the prequels, especially episode two, makes a lot of sense. The first two seasons of Mandalorian, or the very least, again, you don't have to watch all of it, but have someone fill you in if you're not going to, and honestly, it's... I, yeah, I would, I would easily recommend Mandalorian season one or two over this. You don't need to watch the sequel trilogy, although an argument could be made that some stuff is more compelling. So, some stuff on this show is more compelling if you watched it, and the same goes for the animated shows. I would definitely say there's there's stuff in this show that you really... Yeah. And, yeah, you know, The Mandalorian itself, the, that show could be the first Star Wars thing you watch at all. For this one, you do need some background, and some people would argue it's a bad thing because some of the background clashes with what they do on this show. And certainly, I think if, if you're going to have someone be introduced to Star Wars, you know, personally, I would say just you know, try to make it so that they can follow it only having watched the original trilogy, but, yeah. And, yeah, so, when I copied stuff into this document, the Book of Boba Fett had 68% on the tomato meter with a 60% audience score, which is only, honestly a little higher than I thought when I watched, like, YouTube videos talking about the show. And, let's see, but yeah, it's, it's actually fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. 
And on Metacritic, again, when I copied this in, it had a 59% critic score and a 5.4 user score, which that makes more sense to me. And 19 critic and 121 user reviews. And on IMDb, it has 7.4. Fair enough. With yeah, based on 118,000 voters, 26% gave it an 8, 22.3 gave it a 7, 16.4 gave it a 10, 13.1 gave it a 9, and 10.8 gave it a 6. So it actually, yeah, most of the people who voted on IMDb liked it. Fair enough. And let's see yeah so it does not have very much uh, extra material on Disney Plus right now I don't know if that's gonna change considering it wasn't that well received you know there's a bunch for Mandalorian for example but you know if you don't already have Disney Plus and you are a Star Wars fan it has like pretty much all of Star Wars is on Disney Plus. There's, there's, if there's anything missing, then I'm not sure what it is, and I don't think it's very much. So, you know, yeah. I give this five boring fets out of ten. So, if you like this video, please comment, thumbs up, subscribe, hit that little bell. There should be a link to my main channel page, one, two, or more links to stuff like relevant playlists, a suggested video for you to watch on the screen right about now. I put out one vlog per week, reviewing and sharing spoiler thoughts on a movie. And recently, the review and thoughts videos tend to come out very similar to this one. But with the thoughts in the same video instead of in a separate video, since its running time is significantly shorter than a show. In other words, if you want more videos like this, you're in luck. You can check out my back catalog as well as catch my video next week. I hope you enjoyed watching as I enjoy watching and recording, and I'll catch you next time.